Hi everyone, welcome to week two. Uh, for those of you who haven't given up and are still with us here in the course, uh, this week we are going to be talking about um, how we can design things in the browser and what all that means. That's that's kind of a, a complex thing to get into, but that's what the purpose of this video and all of your reading material then the course um, is going to guide us through. And then we are going to be getting started with bitmaps. We should remember bitmap images from last week I presented talking to you exactly you know kind of the differences between bitmaps and vectors um, so just as every week I just want to make sure that everyone um, knows exactly what's expected of them and then also you know understands you know uh, the, the major overall concepts of the week so that's what the purposes of these videos are so just sit back and I'm gonna guide us through this this week our goal is largely to finish up a quick and dirty planning and analysis in terms of the web development life cycle, um, you really did, you know, the bulk of the planning and analysis when you took 2150, as we talked about last week. But this week, we're trying to, because I know a lot of you, as I've talked to you, have, you know, took 2150, like, longer than a year ago, maybe. So, I'm hoping that between last week and this week, we're going to, let's say, you know, review what we've done in the past, wrap our minds around it, do a little bit more analytical work within this you know simulation that I have set up and then we can finally get to the fun part of the course which is weeks three through seven where you're actually designing and developing uh, these things based on all of your planning and analysis remember it's based on a planning and analysis every phase in the web development life cycle builds upon itself um, you can always, if you need to, you can go backwards. There's that feedback loop over there on the right-hand side of the of the cycle. It is a cycle. Um, and again, always remember that in larger firms, which most of you as first-time web designers will work within, you may be on a small team that just does one aspect of the web development life cycle. And all of these parts of the, of the cycle can be going on in tandem in each phase affecting one another. And sometimes you have to push things back to the analysis phase or push things go you're in development you have to push things back to the design phase very common things happen so anyway so I'm hoping that the things that we're doing this week are going to help us finish up wrapping our minds around planning analysis we did lots of brainstorming last week this week we finally present to the executive firm next week we finally get started building some of these things and if you didn't know this class is most definitely a simulation I I've unfortunately had situations in the past where students have come to me, um, not in this, not mo mostly in this class. I, I think people think it's a little far-fetched that we're actually all going to New York and meeting with a client. Um, but I have had students in other classes. I do see simulation type things in all the classes I teach for math, computer science at Webster. You know, I have had students come in the past expecting to receive content from the client and different things like that. And I'm sorry, there's not a real client. Um, in this class, your client is basically whoever you are designing your website for in mind. Maybe it's for yourself. Maybe it's for uh, a family member. Maybe it really is for some place that you're doing an internship. So you maybe really do have a real client and a uh, someone who really will you may be submitting this site to. Some of it, it also could be very fictitious. It could be just some idea that you came up. So I'm trying to wrap us all in, 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 and get us all in this idea that we really are pitching um, our design to the client. In 2150, we really did. We were in New York hearing their needs, and then we have been designing it and analyzing it, and now we're creating this mock site in 3150, which in the, in the end of the course we'll pitch to them, and then they'll decide. Uh, then our firm that we work within will essentially would decide which ones will actually go to, which actually ones would actually go to the client, and, and then let's say your design gets chosen and then your web designer life is perhaps set because you're the one that one of the key people that helped design the Nike site or something like that. Just imagine how much the web designers of Nike's website got paid. I mean, we're talking millions of dollars. Um, but anyways, this class is a simulation. You're not really going to be getting paid millions of dollars. Um, but let's, let's think about one more thing. When you're developing a site for a client, um, especially if you're a freelancer, you'll be able to help, you know, help them make the decision. Um, in terms of deciding whether they want the site good, fast, or cheap, and they need to know that they can only pick two. When you're when you're working within a larger web design firm, those decisions would already be made by people that make much more money than you. <laughs> um, so you'll be experiencing that perhaps in, here in the future. Um, but anyways, when you think of choosing uh, only two of these, you know they can only choose 
too in terms of when you think about you know the quality of the design of the website you know the time that it takes to design and develop the website the cost of designing and developing uh, the website that they want um, when you think of if they really want the site to be really good and they want it fast what does that mean that's going to mean that it's going to be expensive um, a fast turnaround and a site that's really good is going to be expensive uh, Nike's website like I was saying you know I mean <laughs> I doubt that was uh, a fast and a, a, a good site it probably was a project that took you know half of a year um, but if they did want it it would be very expensive now everybody is always going to want good and cheap especially if you're a freelancer if you're designing a site if you post an ad in a paper saying that you're you know a new web designer who's looking for work and then uh, Dave's Pizza Kitchen comes to you and says hey I'd like you to make a site for me of course Dave's Pizza Kitchen is going to want a good and cheap but the problem is is that they shouldn't expect a fast turnaround so that's it's not going to be fast and then finally you know people well actually when you think about it Dave's Pizza Kitchen probably more so is going to want something fast and cheap and in my mind that it would equal to not necessarily being inferior as I write on the lecture page but uh, fast and cheap is not necessarily going to be good um, when you take if you were to take 2120 with me the Dreamweaver class we talk about ways to quickly make sites with the use of Dreamweaver and that's not always going to make mean that that's a, uh, an amazing good site uh, it's going to be something within a very simple template it's going to look perhaps like uh, just a run-of-the-mill site or something you know um, so if you want something uh, fast and cheap, it's not necessarily going to be good. And it's just important for us to think about these. This would be something if we were working with real clients. These are this is something that they would um, that you that either you would be talking with them about or or people within your web design firm would be talking to them about um, at, at 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 this time. So now let's transition from talking about uh, working with clients in this class's simulation to get into. Uh, some of the the main lecture this week, which is talking about what it is and how how it's different when we design things in the browser. Um, if you've taken other classes with me in the past, or uh, I believe your Shelley in your in your book talks about it, you know, when we when we work within a browser, we're really doing things like you know coding, you know, just a window to where the image is located. You know, um, designing in a browser is just really uh, different because you know the some of a lot of people who takes this who take uh, web design courses you know also have a graphic design background and web design is very different than graphic design because we have this medium that we're designing within um, because these images that we're making in this course uh, or for any site you know aren't just these images that are right there you know fixed on the on the print medium you know all we're doing is we're just coding um, a window to where the image is located. Um, so if you guys never really wrapped your mind around that, I hope that kind of opened your mind. Oh, that makes so much sense because we're all we're doing is we're just coding a window to where the image is located. So that's just one of the aspects of designing in a browser. I mean, there's lots of other things to consider. Like I said at the very beginning of this video, it's kind of a complex thing to to wrap our minds around. I mean, it, it does seem simple in the in the sense of you know we've been coding in in previous courses, you know, simple sites, but truly designing a functional and efficient site that that's effortless for the user that meets their needs and meets the client's needs really is a complex uh, thing so there's lots of things to consider when designing uh, in a browser so let's let's chat about some of those for example let's say that you and some friends are you know waiting in line for a movie right um, you're waiting in line for a movie and you see these movie posters over, uh, you know, next to the movie theater. You know, we've all seen these before in the past. So you and your friend, you know, you're looking at the movie poster, and this movie poster was created by a graphic designer. Okay? So, you know, as you walk by this movie poster, essentially all the users are all going to have a very similar experience. You know, yes, when you think about it, depending on the time of day, uh, maybe it's a little dark. Maybe the the lights are working inside the movie poster case, or 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 maybe over time the movie poster has faded or it's ripped. But when you think about it, generally speaking, everyone's going to have the exact same experience 
with that image, right? Now, I'm not talking about the emotions of people and, you know, whether they like the image or not. But generally speaking, when you think about it, people, all people who walk by the image, and uh, yes, p students always raise their hand, well, what about people wearing glasses or not wearing I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is, generally speaking, everyone's going to have the exact same experience with that image. But that's the graphic design realm, right? Now, what about us? You know, when you think about us, you know, we are making, we're doing the same type of design work, but we're doing it within the browser. And you may know different browsers work a little bit differently, right? Um, especially when it comes to Internet Explorer. But, you know, also, cause so, so we're designing within these browsers, right? But let's take it a step further. This isn't 1998, you know. We now, as web designers, have to think about, well, let's not forget about the different browsers, but also let's not forget about the different user agents. Each of these user agents also potentially can give the user a very different experience. And each of these different user agents also have their own sets of browsers. Um, so these are just things that we need to that we need to think about when you're designing within the browser. Technology aside, it, it truly is all about the user and their needs. Um, they shouldn't have to sit there and think about the technology. So they shouldn't have to think. You, you'll hear me. You hear. You'll hear me say a few times in this course that the user's experience should always be effortless. Um, you've done some user analysis uh, in 2150, and so these images here represent different users and you're I wouldn't say that we always have to make every single website uh, design for all different types of users because you know different websites sh ideally would be designed for different types of users maybe a website could be solely designed for a child or maybe we have other websites that could be more geared toward um, the older um, an older audience um, because there's lots of different things you should think about in terms of designing a site based on the users from your user analysis um, but because basically you should be designing your site for those specific users in mind so that's what you guys did in your analytical work of 2150 but it's all about the user and their needs their experience should always be effortless and they're out there trying to find the content that's what they want and we need to make sure as we we can leverage design the design of the site to make sure that they can get to the content because that's what they're that's what they're visiting the site for. If it's not going to be where they expect it to be, they're going to hit the back button. Because, I mean, basically, we do it all the time. We go to Google, we're searching for something, and we click on a link that looks legit, and then we, well, looks legitimate, and then we go to the site. If it's not what we, if the content isn't what we expect it to be, we hit the back button and we find another site to has it. So, us as web designers are basically taking that content. Um, in designing it for all, essentially all user experiences, but more specifically the users that are designed for our site. Web designers, it's very important that we understand that we're not here designing content. I mean, we design content for the web. We're not creating the content itself. Um, a lot of, I mean, now all of our classes that you've been taking are, this is a simulated experience that so you probably have been creating some content, but if, like I said, Amazon, like if you were make work, a web designer working on Amazon's website, and you thought, hey, you know, I'm going to take their um, their copyright statement or some terms of use statement, and I'm going to tweak it a little bit, and I'm going to put my own spin on it, and you were to do that and publish it, well, you would get fired. <laughs> um, you're supposed to take the content that they give you in a Word file and design that for all user experiences on the web. And that comes into place, like I said before, different user agents. You know, these days it's computer, laptop, and tablet. Um, and some, sometimes... Printer, uh, pr print medium is very, very important depending on different types of site, you know, smartphones, phones, stuff like that. But um, basically, another thing to think about is that all users, you know, like I said, their experience should be effortless. And if you were, to, if they were to go to a site and they were to have this, they, they take a look at this site and they realize, man, this doesn't seem like way I expected it to be, they're going to hit that back button. If you were to access your bank's website and look like a blog, what would you do? I mean, you would leave. So all all sites, us as designers, need to understand various specific principles that that adhere to these different types of sites. And the best way to do that is to be an observant web user, which we'll talk about in a second. But basically, you know, we have sites that 
have specific principles that would apply to if you're going to have a portal site, this is how it should look. This is how it should feel. This is how it should function. This is how it should die. Same thing with news, informational, business marketing, blog. You're going to have lots of, there's lots of stuff out there that you could read and find that talk to you about different types of sites and what, how they should look. But the best thing to do is just, as like, for example, this week, you know, you're finding, you know, actually last week you found similar sites of what you hope to design for your website. Those very, yeah, we have to have apples to apples. You can't have a pizza website and then go to your client and say, "Oh, let's look at the Walmart website," because a Walmart website is, is a larger e-commerce website versus a smaller mom and pop, you know, business website. Very different look and feel. Very different functionality. Very different use user needs. Very different types of tasks. So it's important that you find and base your site based on these different types of sites basically and then it, it essentially all boils down to what the overall main purpose of the site is and then you essentially leverage everything to make sure that the user can accomplish what they set out to accomplish and the client will accomplish what they their entire design of the site is to accomplish which is that purpose of the website so once you know that purpose you can then design the entire site to make sure that it accomplishes the needs of the user and the needs of the client. So how do you make sure that you're accomplishing that purpose? Well, think about what you personally as a, as, as a user often find distracting on websites. If there's ever something that's not accomplishing the purpose of the website, essentially you could think of it as like one of those advertisements off on the left that you ignore or those banners up at the top of the page that you ignore. If something isn't aligned with that purpose, potentially think of it as something that could be distraction. So I'm talking, you know, uh, everything. So the functionality of the site should always add value and help accomplish that purpose. The design of the site should always add value and help accomplish those purposes. And the content of the site, essentially, which which you're largely not necessarily in control over, but you can maybe make suggestions. I mean, the client's going to come to you, hey, this is the content, this is what you have to design. But um, essentially, the content should always add value as well and help accomplish for, for the purpose of the site. So when I talk about functionality, you know, that's how the user gets from A to B. That includes things like navigation. That includes things how the layout is responsive in the browser, things like that. Design, we're talking colors, we're talking... Um, uh, how the site is laid out, you know, all those different types of things. So it's very important for you to understand the differences between the differences between functionality and design. When you think of content, you know, that's what the user needs. That's what the user wants. And then in terms of design and functionality, functionality is what the user does. Design is what the user sees. And keep in mind that's it's very important. It's it's all about the user. Remember, so you know content that's what the user needs if it's not there they hit the back button they leave design you know that's what the user sees that's what slaps them in the face web designers are often considered front-end developers so they're designing they're mostly designing what the user sees and that's what the users make evaluations within the first seconds of accessing a site if it doesn't feel if they're accessing a bank website and it doesn't feel like a bank website they're gonna leave okay if they're accessing a portal website and it doesn't feel like a portal website where they're supposed to be searching, they're going to leave. Okay, And largely that has to do with design. But also in terms of functionality, if it doesn't function like a big website, they're going to leave. If it doesn't function like a large e-commerce site like Walmart, they're going to leave. They, they make those decisions within seconds, and then they essentially could leave. So think about all of this as we're finishing up our planning and analysis phase during weeks one and two, because um, I know some of you perhaps aren't quite finished with everything that we had to do in week one, which is okay. We, this is just, we need to get it done now. That's what the purpose of these two weeks are, are to finish up the planning analysis so that we can truly jump in to the fun part, which is weeks three through seven, where we actually are designing and developing these, these things for our mock, uh, for our mock site, which we would essentially pitch, essentially pitch to the client um, at the end of the course in week eight. So here's just a quick snapshot of what you're asked to do this week, and then I'm going to talk about those two major discussion questions where we actually get graded on both of those individually uh, this week. Um, and that'll be what, what's happening in the, in the following slides. But anyways, um, this week you're asked to read Chapter 3, 
which is photographs from camera to the web page from your designing from painting in the web um, that chapter is going to help you jumping into bitmap talking about the logistics of bitmaps and giving you some suggestions on editing bitmaps and getting those on your site and then web as a frame that's what i kind of started off this whole um, this whole uh, video about talking about the web as a frame in the sense of all we're doing is we're coding a window to where that image is located and students often have he get to me in this class and still have trouble understanding that all we're doing is code coding a window to where the image is located that image is not fixed on that page so lots and lots of things to ch chat about in terms of that and that chapter will help wrap our brains around that and then five talks about pop graphics jump in there as we finish up our last bitmap chapter and then eventually uh, well next week we're gonna be doing stuff with CSS but um, eventually we're gonna be jumping into vectors which will which is totally different type of type of graphic vector is like I talked to you is before is a mathematical equation that we essentially fill with the color bitmap those are pixel based images that you can take with the camera um, Anyway, so I have suggested Linda videos for you guys to watch, and I'm going to showcase those just here in a second. Um, but again, those are just suggestions. Um, I would suggest at least checking some of them out and then finding the ones that you want to look at more in depth. In terms of the discussion questions this week, this is where we're graded in terms of the executive brief where you are doing your um, executive summary. Think of your just a mini presentation that you'd be presenting to the board of your firm. Um, how is this different between what we did last week and what we did this week? I'll talk about that in just a second. But it's basically you can use everything that you did last week, apply the feedback, and then we're also going to be showcasing uh, a, just a sample logo, sample layout type thing. And then for desired web graphic and design elements, that is key, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But think of it as giving, you know, you break, you've break down your brainstorming, and now you're determining 10 web or graphic design elements that you want to include in your site and that's what you're going to be basing your learning on for weeks three through seven to making sure that you accomplish those ten things and then assignments unfortunately we do have to have quizzes our department requires us to have quizzes so um, feel free to sit in your pajamas at the comfort of your own home with your book up with your book open and Google open perhaps and take care of the quiz and then in terms of extra credit that I have a video presenting presented for you designing in the browser so I'm hoping that someone's going to sign up for that and then lead us in the discussion around that video if we don't have anybody sign up for it definitely jump in check out that video or at least bookmark it and save it for later because I think it's something that's really going to help you understand and, and be a supplement to the things that I'm discussing so our goal with our Linda videos this week is just to get us started with pit maps um, depending on your uh, tool of choice uh, whether you have access to Photoshop which again, like I've mentioned before, is not required, but many, many students that take this course do. Um, or if you would like to have the, a, a free similar tool to Photoshop that complements that would be uh, GIMP. And these videos that I have suggested for you are both on Linda, both by the same author, essentially both talking about very uh, similar things. Um, the core concepts, um, chapter one for the Photoshop series, I do think that would be great for you to watch whether you uh, are using the Photoshop or GIMP. And then I then would then suggest, as you can see here, um, jumping into the tool, your tool of choice. Um, so this is going to help us get started with bitmaps um, this week. This is the demonstrational portion of the course, which without it, I mean, essentially you're just learning from the book. That's totally up to you. Or, I mean, you don't necessarily have to use Linda for learning about web apps. There's lots of resources out there that are text-based, but I have found time and time again that many students who are, are who uh, have a tough time getting into Linda, but when they finally do, they're wishing that they have been using it for all of their previous co-op courses. So um, please, if you didn't get into it last week when, as we were reading, as we were reviewing stuff to really get us thinking creatively and, and things like that, please jump into it this week and get started with bitmaps. Even if you just barely get in for five, ten minutes, I think you're going to be pleased and surprised and you're going to want to download those ex those resources and try to do the, some of the things that they're doing in terms of layers and layer styles and manipulating images and masks and all those different things um, to get you started editing bitmaps. So now let's take a look at 
our first major discussion question this week, which is the executive brief. Like I was saying before, and just the brief overview of the assignments, it's basically taking everything that we did last week with that table that you guys filled out, and you're summarizing it and presenting it in a way that would be used for an, an executive brief, you know, for the executive firm. I suggest here that it should be no more than 250 words because it really should be concise. Um, but the main things that you need to make sure that you're doing is you're implementing the feedback that you receive from the class and from me last week and make sure that you implement that for what you'd be providing in your summary this week. Very, very, very key. And then aside from doing that, you need to attach at least two images to your summary for the class and I to view and discuss. Basically, a mock design layout. Um, it's up to you how you want to do that. Feel free to create it in GIMP. Feel free to create it in uh, Visio. Something. I mean, it, it's totally up to you. That most students have uh, did some sort of a layout that they created for 2150. Feel free just to use that if that's all you have time for this week. But we just kind of want to get an idea for a look and feel of your site. And then a tentative logo design. You guys did something similar in 2150, feel free to go ahead and jump into that and tweak it a little bit more now that you're learning some more stuff with GIMP and Photoshop. It's totally up to you. But I would suggest uh, it, at bare minimum you have to, you could at least just share the one that you did in 2150. Now the next discussion posting, as I finish up this, this sort of video for this week, is a little bit more involved. This is where you're sharing a list of 10 web and or graphic design elements that you hope to include in your site's design. And here I discuss about how you present each of these. And I'm just suggesting you to write, at minimum, two sentences. And I'm very specific on how you should present these 10 elements. Now, what are these 10 elements? Well, it's totally up to you to figure that out. In a second, I'm going to show you a website that I'm hoping you can use. If you don't have ideas, this is a website that you can go to for inspiration. But basically, for each of these elements, Let's say your element is having a gradient background. Um, so clearly state for the executive firm, you know, how that element would add value to the user's experience and or the client to help accomplish the site's goal, purpose or goal. So you could do that within your first sentence. And then ask a client, ask the class, I'm sorry, ask the class a question that you have about this element, the gradient background. And then in parentheses have a list of the tool that you're planning on using for it. Either it be Inkscape for, cre for creating a vector or GIMP for creating a bitmap. If you don't really know, go ahead and put one down. The class and I will talk about it and suggest the tool. Um, and then number four is just a link to a site that has that example in use. So you guys shared three similar sites last week. Perhaps your examples could be coming from those and those are comparable websites but since these graphic design elements are found in all types of different sites um, you can always share an example for a site that's totally not similar but just say hey this is a good example of what I am trying to do they use it a little bit they might use that gradient background and for their own reasons but this still the gradient background would apply for our site so basically just share us a link for a site that uses that gra gradient background Inside the course, I provide you a link to this site called Web Design Ledger. I think you're going to enjoy this site, particularly for this inspiration area. So go ahead and click on Inspiration when you get there. And then what you get in this area of this blog is examples of web design elements. And it gives you examples of sites that showcase these elements. So for example, 21 inspiring examples of typography and web design or let's see what else we got 21 inspiring examples of about pages so websites and good examples of sites that have really good about pages or inspiring let's see what else do we have here that's not good uh, 21 examples of beautiful color use from web design so you're looking for example sites these are sites that you can get examples from this is also from going to this inspiration area give you ideas of what your 10 graphic or web design elements could be so this let's see this section has let's see I mean, we're talking, you know, maybe, gosh, let's see, oh, 33 pages, and if there's 10 of these on 33 pages, so we're talking like 300 potential ideas for your 
uh, 10 web or graphic design elements. So definitely check these out and take a look at these. So to finish up, be sure that you're an observant web user this week. Um, just as you're a user, we're designing sites for the users that we've uh, analyzed and are ready to create our sites for. Um, but you, yourself, have an eye for, for things that you know the user sees, the user needs, and the user's experience should always be effortless. So please, be an observant web user this week as you're critically looking at these different examples and determining what different you know elements that you're going to be wanting in your site. Um, but always, you know, keep them at the forefront of your mind because that's who you're making the site for. And then, you know, of course, let the class right know if you have any questions. Um, so I hope you guys have a good week.